Hi guys, what is up? It is Than from Advanced Reef Aquarium. One of the big differences in moving from freshwater systems to saltwater systems is a greater emphasis on water chemistry. There's a pretty steep learning curve to get a handle on all the different chemical parameters, and it can be a source of frustration for many aspiring reef hobbyists. This video is going to focus on one of these chemical parameters, that being magnesium. What is the role of magnesium in the reef aquarium? First off, it's the third most abundant ion in salt water, the two most abundant being sodium and chloride, which should come as no surprise, NaCl being salt. For whatever reason, the hobby gravitated to parts per million, or ppm, as the go-to unit of measurement. Magnesium represents 1300 ppm, while calcium is around 425 ppm. It appears that magnesium is three times more abundant than calcium, but the reality is it's much more. Parts per million takes into account the mass of the ions, and it just so happens that calcium is significantly heavier than magnesium. Therefore, magnesium is actually five times more abundant than calcium if you're counting the individual atoms. Given its incredible abundance, it's somewhat peculiar that magnesium is not high on the list of things that hobbyists test for. It kind of lags behind salinity, calcium, and alkalinity. At Tidal Gardens, we rarely go out of our way to test for magnesium. So what gives? Should we be testing for it more? Short answer, probably yes. End of video. No, just kidding. Let's take a look at what's really going on. Magnesium, as I mentioned before, exists as an ion in salt water as Mg2+. That means it carries two positive charges. So, do you know what else carries two positive charges in solution? Calcium. So it should come as no surprise that two ions behave similarly and are utilized by our coral inhabitants in very similar ways. When stony corals form their skeletons, magnesium is regularly substituted for calcium. The same goes for calcium-based algae such as coralline, which is why you sometimes hear folks on message boards talk about the importance of magnesium in the refugiums that are heavy in macroalgae. The interactions of magnesium, calcium, and alkalinity are closely tied to one another. I'll tell you guys a little story that happened here recently. In one of my systems, I just had the hardest time keeping my calcium and alkalinity up. In natural seawater, calcium is about 425 ppm, something in that neighborhood. Our tank is showing the calcium levels way lower than that. It's at 325, so 100 parts per million off from where it should be. When we start adding calcium to the tank, however, what happens is that the level of calcium goes up a little bit but our alkalinity drops off dramatically. These ions seemingly fight one another as those levels change. When we only test for calcium and alkalinity, it can be very frustrating to get both levels to match natural salt water. Here is where magnesium comes into play. In the above example, there's a really good chance that the magnesium levels were low. Magnesium provides buffering capacity by bonding with carbonate ions carbonate being another word for alkalinity in reef aquariums. Because magnesium is binding up carbonate, it allows for more carbonate in the water than if magnesium wasn't there at all. When magnesium levels are appropriately high, it allows for the addition of calcium without the associated drop in alkalinity. Hopefully that clears up a bit about the role of magnesium in our water. If you test your water and magnesium is low, there's a few ways that you can go about boosting it. Most salt mixes these days have a good amount of magnesium already. You could just do more water changes and over time magnesium levels will rise. Alternatively, you can dose a magnesium supplement. Advanced Reef Aquarium carries a number that you can choose from. One last thing I wanted to address about magnesium is actually unrelated to how it normally functions in a reef chemistry sense. 
there's an invasive algae called Bryopsis, which is very difficult to remove. It sort of looks like green hair algae, but it's somewhat feathery in appearance and significantly more difficult to remove, as most herbivores don't really want to touch it. There are a lot of posts online that suggest raising magnesium levels very high and killing Bryopsis that way. By very high, I mean 1,500 parts per million to 1,800 parts per million. Here's a little wrinkle, though. It's only if you use a particular magnesium supplement made by Kent called Tech-M. People speculate that it's not actually the magnesium that's stopping Bryopsis, but something else entirely in the formulation of Tech-M that does it. So, if you're having issues with Bryopsis, it's purely anecdotal, but perhaps something like Tech-M is worth trying if other efforts were unsuccessful. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and visit us online at advancedreefaquarium.com. Take care, everyone.